Mamma Mia is a mediocre movie. And yet I am a slut for it. It's a guilty pleasure film, a masterpiece that is so bad, it's so good to watch. I've probably watched Mamma Mia and its sequel more than 50 times. Even when I'm listening to my music on shuffle, I'm bombarded with all things ABBA, and I'm completely fine with that. When I was leaving work once, the first song that played in my car was slipping through my fingers, the Mamma Mia version, of course. In the movie, Donna, one of the main characters, sings this song while her daughter Sophie prepares for her wedding day. Donna realizes how fast time has flown now that Sophie is leaving the nest and is ready to spread her wings. During my drive home, I imagined a scenario where I was singing this song to my youngest sister, Bianca, at her wedding, and I broke into tears. My heart ached terribly as I sobbed and sobbed. This was a fake scenario for fuck's sake, and I was reacting as if it was happening in real time. Towards the end of the song, Sophie sings along with her mother. In my version, my middle sister Nika joins me, and we all hug at the end. When I arrived home, I stayed in my car for 30 minutes, not yet ready to go inside and answer questions about why my entire face was red and swollen. Am I obsessed with this movie? Absolutely. So why exactly does Mamma Mia have me in such a chokehold? It is essentially a huge drunken karaoke party amongst A-list actors with a plot that mostly doesn't make sense and a conflict that could easily be solved with a paternity test. <laughs> so do I love it just because of the music, the cinematography, the cast? Is it because of Dominic Cooper and Amanda Seyfried's take on Abba's Lay All Your Love on Me during the beach scene, which possibly could have awakened my bisexuality when I was younger? <laughs> or is it because of the ever-present mother-daughter relationship? Yes to all of the above, but especially to that last question. I don't live on some remote Greek island or run a crumbling hotel business like Donna and Sophie. I don't have a full entourage of people to sing back up for me whenever I'm ready to burst into song while waiting at the doctor's office or in line for in and out I don't have children on my own, so how could I possibly relate to them? I'm the oldest of three. I'm the daughter of two immigrant Filipino parents who have worked ridiculously hard for as long as I've known them, and I've known them my whole life. But why should they invest in a daycare or a babysitter when they can have their oldest kid help out instead? I don't get paid because as a result of my being born, I owe my parents my life, <laughs> whether I like it or not. My mom's a nurse. She works night shifts, requiring her to sleep as much as possible throughout the day. When my dad, an RV mechanic, is out at work, I'm the one working the day shift at home. From the age of five, I already knew how to change my sister's diapers, clothe them, give them their bottles, and help put them to sleep. As soon as they both learned how to walk and babble, the chaos only worsened. If they cried, I'd cry as well and yell at them to stop, not understanding how babies work at this age, but it was worth the shot. <laughs> at least being older had its advantages. Like if I broke something, I could blame them. <laughs> they couldn't even form a proper sentence yet, so they couldn't defend themselves. And if my sisters got new toys, well, guess what? They're mine now, too. Sharing is caring. I had spent every day oh, with my sisters. So when I started school, I remember feeling homesick. My heart would sink as I wondered what my sisters were doing without me. At school, I also struggled a bit academically. English is not my parents' first language. My dad was helpful with my math homework. However, the rest of the school subjects were all for me to complete independently. My mom always used one excuse. I'm no good with English. When she needed to get out of jury duty, I'm no good with English. <laughs> when I needed help with homework, I'm no good with English. When my sisters eventually needed help with homework, I'm no good with English. Not only was I a babysitter, student, translator, sister, and daughter, I was obligated to add teacher to my extensive collection of titles. If our parents couldn't understand something or didn't have the time or energy to help, my sisters came to me for guidance and that didn't just apply to school. They came to me for almost everything, 
advice about boys, how to use a printer, how to properly cook pasta, college applications, driving tips. I always know when they need something from me if their sentences begin with ate and their eyebrows were scrunched together. Ate means older sister in Tagalog. And they only ever refer to me as Ate or Ate Vicky because if they didn't, our mom would scold them for being disrespectful towards me. <laughs> to this day, they still call me Ate. And it would feel like a sin if they ever called me by just my first name. <laughs> About 10 years ago, I was napping on the couch when I heard Nika yell, Ate, the cake is smoking. I immediately jumped up, opened the windows and the sliding door, and turned on the ceiling fan. I didn't think to ask what had happened or how the cake began smoking. The only thing on my mind was, fuck, if I don't get rid of this smoke now, the fire alarm will go off, and mom would be so pissed that we woke her up early before work. <laughs> Once the smoke finally cleared, my sisters explained that they were trying to microwave a chocolate cake in a mug. They've done this multiple times before, but this time they decided to add some chocolate chips. They weren't aware of how easily the chips could burn if not heated in short bursts. By the time I started college, I already had my driver's license, and I was assigned pickup duty from my sisters whenever our parents were unavailable. Until Nika got her license, my work and school schedules were formed to accommodate my sister's schedules too. Occasionally, if I didn't have enough time between classes to drop them off at home, I'd ask, do you want to come to class with me? And their eyes would light up. As we progressed through school, classes became more difficult and so did the assignments. I'm a major procrastinator, which means that it is already a struggle to manage my tasks, let alone assist my sisters with their work as well. Nika, however, has always been considerate of others. If I had too much on my plate, she would leave me be and finish her homework alone as best as she could, just like I did when I was younger. Bianca is a little different. As the baby of the family, it was pretty much standard for things to go her way whenever she needed something. This would annoy Nika and me, but we're used to it by now. So even if I was frantically studying for my finals the day before I was meant to take them, Bianca would still ask me for help with an essay on a book she could barely understand. And you know what? I pushed my studying aside and helped her anyway because that's just who I am. My life is and has been dedicated to being there for my sisters. It's tiresome, it's mentally draining, it's something I do all over again in a heartbeat. It took a while for me to figure out why I really love Mamma Mia. My sisters and I have a habit of reenacting scenes from our favorite shows and movies, but Mamma Mia wasn't one of them. This movie was just for me. I am Donna. Donna had Sophie when she was barely 22 years old and solely cared for her, all while trying to make ends meet. I'm 26 now, and I've been raising my sisters as if they came from my own womb, and because of that, I see different versions of myself in each of them. Nika's nurturing and responsible, always looking out for us, making sure we take a break every once in a while, and even providing me financial guidance because I am far too impulsive when it comes to money. Bianca's easygoing and hilarious, always eager to hop into my bed for a nap because it's comfier than hers, and always willing to share her excitement when she presents the latest K-pop merch she's purchased. I can't imagine being more than a two-hour drive away from them. And honestly, the idea of moving out and moving on with our individual lives is so terrifying simply because we're growing up. I remember when they were still in diapers and pulling out my hair with their tiny hands, and now they're adults. They both have jobs and are in college to become nurses. They are studying hard so that they can care for others, just like I have always been caring for them. I've been taking care of my sisters for so long that when it finally came time for me to focus on myself, I didn't know how to. I didn't actively start hanging out with friends outside of my responsibilities until my last year in high school. I put other people's priorities before mine. I always wanted to make sure everyone was comfortable, even if I wasn't. I stayed silent about whatever issues I was dealing with because I didn't want to be a burden. Again, I am Donna. I did eventually curate my own circle of friends and found a loving partner I could rely on. I've always been extremely lucky to be able to call my sisters my best friends by blood, bonded by tears, laughter, 
trauma and love. For a while, I thought I was alone and had no one there for me. It took me a long time to realize that everything I went through, my sisters went through too. And no one could truly understand me better than them. If I was having a panic attack in my room after a tumultuous fight with our parents, Nika's calmly rubbing my back and Bianca's handing me a glass of water. If one of us needs to vent about some shitty thing our mom did, we could spend hours talking up a storm. <laughs> and if someone wants to go out for ice cream or boba for no reason whatsoever, then we're there. We can dance, we can jive. Hell, we're having the time of our lives. <laughs> But it's hard to fully accept that time is truly slipping through our fingers. I look at my sisters now and I'm more homesick for the past than ever before. I miss watching my sisters play Minecraft or Wizard 101 throughout our summer vacations. I miss having all three of us fit comfortably into one bed whenever we decided to have a sleepover in my room. I miss when Mamma Mia was just some silly, mediocre movie. Every time I watch this movie, I will always be thinking of my sisters because my, my, I can never let them go. Vicky Durham, ladies and gentlemen, Vicky.